Ready? We're the ex senators, and you're watching Entertainment Focus. So, how's it going? Really good. 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 Fun time so far. So, we're in London, we just caught a bit of a showcase, a brief uh, few songs set. Yep. How do you think it went? Oh, I thought it was fun. It was great. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. It was a good time. Good time. Good time. It's, so, it's strange to rip the album down and just play it acoustic. You know, play, play after record down myself. So is that the general feel that you get when you do these sorts of gigs? I mean, is it that different to, to your Yeah, I mean, it's a completely different thing than playing with the full band, which yeah. is just an onslaught and you know of, of sound. And uh, I think you've got to really kind of uh, you got to listen to each other more. I think really, like, or I have to listen to him more. Because you're actually a five piece, aren't you? Yeah. So we've just got the two of you here. So where are the other three? Um, I think <laughs> three different cities in, in the U.S. are <laughs> doing other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So you're over here promoting the new album that comes out, I believe, in August? August 7th, the album comes out worldwide, and then uh, we'll be touring uh, in the UK not long after that, I think in uh, late September. So tell us a bit about the record. What, what can we expect? Uh, it's a rock and roll record. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, there's no some, rules. Yep. There's some political songs, there's some just straight up rock songs, there's a couple slower songs. Yeah, yeah I think it's got, a, it's got an arc. We tried to, to put together a record that uh, we wouldn't be bored playing. Mm. and that people wouldn't be bored listening to. So it's def definitely not every song sounds the same. Uh, I think we, we, we wrote about 40 or 45 songs for the record and trimmed it down to 12 and then some alternative tracks that we'll release over this year. Um, but the idea was to make something that we could feel has a kind of a musical arc to it. So it's quite, with the songs that we heard tonight, as well as the, the video that you've got, Start a Fight, it's quite politically themed. Sure. Would you say that that is a occurring theme on the on the record is that something that you I, yeah I think about? if anything the, the political side of the band the recurring theme there is wake up yeah people people are asleep at the wheel uh, you know half the people in in the US don't vote I think that that you're seeing that in the UK as well people don't necessarily participate in the process um, and people you know you have to own it you have to be involved in whatever's happening so I think that's mm. the theme uh, from a, the political side of the band is definitely about wake up folks it's, it's, it's Spinning right by, you know, it's spinning out of control. So, if you were in uh, politics, what's <laughs> the skeletons? <laughs> Hence the name of the band. What's the, you know, I mean, obviously you've got your opinions on on politics uh, right. through your music. What's the strongest message that you would uh, promote yourselves? You got to want to start? Get along. Get yeah. Agree on something and go go yeah. forward. Yeah, yeah, that would be a good start. That's. Start a fight, which is the lead single, the single that's out uh, to start with, is about how politicians on both sides of the aisle continually just if if you have an evil other to point at, mm -hmm. you can focus all the hate and fear on something else. People don't pay attention to what you're doing over here. You know, ignore the man behind the curtain, kind of thing. And so, both sides of the aisle in the U.S. and I think you see that in, in other countries too, who are constantly arguing with each other and you get gridlock and nothing ever gets accomplished. They wait for the next party to take over and it's always tit for tat. 200 years ago, uh, George Washington said he didn't believe in a two-party system because it would always be tit for tat, a payback. And he was, he was absolutely right, you know? So. so the single that you've got out is uh, your UK debut single, which is Start a Fight. Right. Talk us through that track. Who came up with the concept? Who came up with the idea? And how uh, it was, yeah, I started it, yeah it's, yeah. it's one of those two. I mean, Van and I write a, a lot of the record. He would write the music, and I'll write the lyric, and then we'll arrange it with the band and rewrite parts. But Start a Fight was something that I wrote on an acoustic guitar uh, in, a, in a, uh, a spit of a whole lot of uh, anger over what was what I was watching on television at the time. So um, I know you have Rupert Murdoch here, too. And we have the pleasure of the Fox News Channel in the U.S., which is the the Rupert Murdoch TV station that is constantly spitting out venomous, you know, they, they say something and, and act like it's news, then they'll have another department of another news st station that Rupert Murdoch happens to own too, act like they're validating the first thing as a news story and be, be, pretty soon it becomes fact, even though it's not really fact, they're, you know, they're sort of just quasi-facts. So I was watching that happen and other broadcasters uh, uh, coming around and, and just reacted to it and started fighting with this kind of Five minute spew of uh, being sick of people just you know uh, constantly arguing and not getting anywhere. Kind of frust frustration. Right? So I just want to talk about the video because the, vi the video for the track is actually a, quite a visual piece. Right. So right. how much input do you have when it comes to your creative? Uh, well, output? so so uh, I directed the video. We had a crew of a couple other people write the script, and then the the band. I kept bringing in the storyboards and talking to everybody and. 
brainstorming. I mean, everybody would throw out, hey, what about this? What about that? I think the Mitt Romney money machine was Vans' idea. So it's just Mitt Romney wearing a suit and money coming out of it constantly. Uh, plus, we couldn't get Sarah Palin to, to actually dress up in Wonder Woman contest, costume with a shotgun, although she's come close. Uh, so we animated it. You know, that was the idea. So what do you think your chances of getting Sarah to do a, a follow-up I think video? they're slimmer than slimmer. Really? Every day that video is out there. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, the guy who did the cells is, is, uh, works for Marvel Comics and, and other stuff. And he did a great job. And besides that, it was also we wanted our own superhero characters. Yeah, because so, I was going to say, the, the artwork is actually very distinctive. It is, very yeah. Very eye-catching, isn't it? He did a brilliant job. His name is uh, Jibba, Jibba Anderson, a uh, great, uh, great animator, uh, illustrator. So, who actually formed the band? How did how did it all start? Go back to the start. For we us. did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you are the songwriting. Yeah, we're. The, I mean, we're pretty much the songwriting partners of the band, yeah. and 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 the other guys in the band definitely, uh, you know, are incredible players and bring their their part uh, to the songs. But we start off kind of with the basic stuff between the two of us most of the time. And you sort of build from there. With yeah, everyone else. exactly. So you always hear of hiccups that bands have along the way, you know, in their earlier years. And have there been any hiccups for the ex senators? Basically. Anything that's yeah, almost. <laughs> I think Brian, that's a hiccup for every band. Right? I think it is. I think bass players. It's a, it's a running Thanks, joke, man. you know. I think Spinal Tap had drummers. We've got bass players. I'm waiting for Brian to implode. So nothing that's almost split the group. No, no, not no. at all. I think we're we're all friends, and we've known each other through other musical things, and, and uh, all have a lot of mutual respect for each other. And and I mean, everybody in the band is a great player, and has been in other great projects, and so it's more if we come together, and it's like a. It's, it's very much like lightning in a bottle. And it kind of careens out of control until we get it on tape. And then it gets some sort of sound. So with the showcase that we, we got to see here today in London, um, you know, we got to see, obviously, the politically themed tracks, but there was also a diverse um, sort of like myriad of, of tracks that you performed for us. Right. Is there anything on the record that's coming out that holds particular importance to either of you? Hmm. And why? Well, it's always cool to hear one of your songs on the record. Something you wrote, and something you, right. you came up with. That's right. You know, yeah. That's all the same. I think all the same is a, a second. Or, a sec, I think it's second on the album, um, and that was one of. There's several songs where Van would hand me the track and go, "Here's here's a musical idea," mm -hmm. and I'd play it in my car and immediately be like, "Okay, I'm singing the lyric into my phone," and I'd have the song. All the same is one of those. Um, Psychotropic Love Freak is that way. Several songs that are that way on the album. And those, I think those are, are uh, cool to me because they're, they're a real musical conversation between the two of us as writers. Uh, and then and beyond that, I think, uh, I think Angel of all the songs on the album really stands out because it was the first song that the whole band really co-wrote. Yeah. Um, it's the one song on the album where we actually wrote it live in rehearsal. Yeah. Yeah. And, that was, and that was more of a, a really surfing, you know. Kind of it kept just shifting until all of a sudden it kind of caught fire. So have you always wanted to be musicians? Yeah, yeah. pretty much that. If yeah. there was anything that you, you... It was that or trying the handles of parked cars. <laughs> that exactly where I was going. If you if you weren't musicians, is that where you'd be? Is there anything else that you'd want you'd, you'd see yourself in? Officially, no. no. Uh, what, how about you, Vic? I can't think of anything. What else would you do? Stupid right now. No, uh, no, what else would you do? I don't know, I'd probably Seriously. work in television. <laughs> <laughs> Which he does, that's his day gig. And he's won an Emmy. He's won an Emmy. It's sitting on, a, on his refrigerator. It was in his trunk for six months. It's only joking. I told him he should put it on a chain and wear it like jewelry. You know? That's something you want to show off, mate, every day if you walk down the street. Have it dangling. I'm going to my car for his old Thunderbird. <laughs> so, have you got, apart from this gig that we're seeing tonight, have you got any official performances planned for UK fans? Uh, in terms of what's coming up, I know we've yeah. got one thing we've been asked to do. It's not official. I don't think I can talk about it. Uh, that is a uh, Twitter-sponsored event in the fall, uh, but it's, it's not all locked up. So I know that there's. Oh, don't worry. Coming. I'll just turn off the camera. Turn here. off the camera. I don't. I don't know. I'm just thinking in terms of we're playing here. It's mainly the press tour we're doing right now, and then we'll yep. be back with the band end of September, early October, and we'll so have you, dates on that. Very soon. You're just giving us a little bit of a teaser. Right. 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 Trying to just get over here and say hey to people and get the, get the ball started. <laughs> So what else can we expect from you in 2012? Is there any uh, other projects you want to Yeah, I think yep. the tour and then uh, and more videos. We definitely got more videos in production right now. Uh, and uh, you know what? I really had a lot of fun with the remixes, and we're talking about uh, even doing some of that with uh, a couple of the tracks. So that's, that's, I think that's a great way to explore where a song can go, working with other people and letting them 
I mean, Howie Benno did the, the, the uh, UK remix for Start a Fight. He's like, do you mind if I totally mess it up? I'm like, yeah, go for it. And, and it's kind of cool to have that thrown back at you. So. Well, we can't wait to hear more from you, and, and hopefully 2012 will be the year that you uh, explode onto the scene. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yes. you very much for talking to us. Appreciate it. Thank you. Cheers.